So, <laughs> welcome to my little special spot here. Um, I'm going to speak in generalities where I could be a little more specific. Um, in fairness to myself and other parties, but white people practice perversions. And, you know, uh, and in their way of life, a lot, I think it could be said. Not all, but a lot. And they never do this, but that they're accustomed to passing off the cost onto their prey. So, if you think of God like practicing a kind of perversion in his conversion, right? Jesus is all upset because of the money changers. So they can give more money to God. How could you make this a place for business? Trying to find the right way to convert anything you can to give it to the the white god. Who's always exercising certain perversions and then making his prey pay the cost. Just like God can murder and declare himself innocent, he can humiliate people and pass on the cost of humiliation or humiliating people onto his prey. If life were perverted, passed off onto those whose lives sustain the effect, the impact, or the full knowledge of that perversion. So that it would never be heard. Like a lot of people who grew up around alcohol and anger and emotional or economic uncertainty, people can become unusually sadistic in their relationships, humiliating. So much humiliation in life then it becomes a way of speaking. If you can't do anything about it, you can join a family together with it and pass off its cost onto the family scapegoat or each other. Because, it, you know, this the idea of one scapegoat in the family is a bit of a persuasion. It's not really good for anyone. Even the, the, the sense of the scapegoat, it's never a con a, an explanation even that is sufficient, even in that of the scapegoat or the prey of the family or the one who suffers the most, who maybe even in some sense you might think gets the most attention because they're always sick, for instance, or something like that. But in fact, no one is hurt, but everyone is hurt, and the cause could never be passed off. At best, it could be spread out to everybody. But nobody wants to do that. Someone has to bear the cost the most. Someone has to get more attention. And someone is going to get more attention who is going to look like they get, get more attention than the person who's actually taking everybody's attention away. That makes all attention so much worth getting. A family that doesn't have the right attention or whose attention is being taken away suddenly passes on their attention so much or their attention is so taken away that members of the family get sick 
from a lack of attention. Competition for attention, and so on. So that's my thought on that. So yeah, people end up passing costs, even though it's not logical because you can never pass enough of that cost off to pay for the cost. Right? In an economy of passing off costs for the economy on vulnerable people is never actually going to give everyone the health that they deserve for all the money that they earn. You're never going to get enough health care to pay for the diseases from all the attention you have to give away to earn anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'll never be able to pay enough for it one way or the other. The society really is in prison. It's in a life sentence. We have to do the things that we do, but we haven't found a way to pay all the cost of doing all those things because there are exorbitant costs. There are enough exorbitant demands that white families don't have enough attention to spare. They don't even have it before they get married, let alone after, enough attention. And they make do to pass on the cost. How the whole economy is about passing on the cost of living to our children, our grandchildren, that's what it is, that's what it's for. Passing on the sin, right? Pass on the debt, pass on the doom. We ever dolly that we earn in every fight, every war we go to, and everywhere we die. There's more debt for everyone that comes after us. Paying down the debt, digging in the debt, paying down the debt. So we fill in the hole and we dig a bigger hole. What a mind fuck. So Dietmar, on one part of the park, last year he was talking about poor people taking his taxes away from a government that's too compassionate to them. We got two white men last year uh, talking about how Ukrainian refugees don't deserve money from the government because that's taking money away from them. And now yesterday Dietmar was telling me that poor people in the United States on television, albeit, are just stealing stuff because the Democrats said they could. So how do poor people make out in white society? How do poor people make out? What happens to poor people, right? People pass the buck on them, right? They're like a receptacle. Whenever white people are bigoted, they're always passing the buck of the torture in their own family. Someone in their family is always an alcoholic, sexually abused, toxic, maybe just suffering quietly, estranged maybe, dead at the age of 30 from a sudden heart attack, fell off a ladder after the birth of their second child. It happens all the time. It's awful. Nobody wants this. Nobody in their family wants this. But we have a very morbid society with a lot of pecuniary and particularly humiliating demands upon our flesh and blood. Even in our infancy, the economy demands it. We have to give birth to children or we can't pay the debt of living for today. We're living off of tomorrow. We live off the future like it's the carcass of life. We're picking its flesh and then trying to discriminate between who's more a burden or not, who's more at cause for society's ills and debts and dooms. Is it these people over here? Jesus. I don't want to live like that. My mind's meant for bigger things.
Interesting observation, change of tone for the day. Isn't it interesting, correct me if I'm wrong, that nobody's dreams ever take place in outer space? You're welcome. <laughs> I think it's a very interesting thought. It, you know, it makes me think things, but I want to leave people to kind of ponder. I've heard of people astral traveling into outer space. I'm not even sure if that's real. I'm sure no one has dreams in outer space. Oh, and I haven't pooped today. Yeah, I don't know. No reason. What did I eat yesterday? I have beans. Home. Um, had some leftover steak. Burnt bad. That was great. It was both burnt and a little bit medium rare at the same time. Mm. Baked potato. I had some scrambled egg. Some cheese crackers and some cucumber. So, yeah. but it's weird. I just look at people that are on my mind when I wake up or go to sleep, and I go, "Okay." Remember, I've had poison the last two days. Seem any no emotional reason, but uh, I guess there's always emotional reasons. I'm gonna get going, I don't really want to listen to that. So, fuck, yeah, let's go. I want to go, I know where I'm going. I know where I'm gonna go. Let's go, let's go. I know where I'm gonna go. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you like my little earth seat? <laughs> I figured I like being here enough, I might as well get a seat. So, you know, they need to do their work. But uh, I guess this guy does too. But, you know, Saturday or Sunday or whatever holidays will come along and be nice and quiet. So. Yeah, I did feel a little paranoid today, so it's like I feel like, you know, I'm usually, that full moon was a good sign, though. it really was, the other day, I mean, it's, it's good, but I think that there, there sometimes can be a little hump in the old bowel movements. So we'll see, I've had no stomach pain or anything like that, so it should be good thing. Pack this up. Thank you. It's a nice spot along the river. Yesterday I didn't have a bowel move until 12.30 or 1. Overt stalking too much. Uh, I don't like walking certain places, I'll say. And one of the downsides of living in a town like this, a place like this, I try to stave it off with more optimism, but the, the kind of pallor of the culture and the people tends to sink in, and I tend to become more not friendly to it. You know, you walk around. I'm not just in meeting anyone. I'm tired of being approached by Christians or, you know, the weird people. You no, know, it's not a very tantalizing part of my life, interacting with white people. It doesn't offer me a lot. 
if you start to sit back and say, well, what do I want, what do I want from a culture or my connections with other people? Well, it's not this. <laughs> so, you know, I, I wonder sometimes if people can pick up on that. You know, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it just makes me look more like some angry, homeless nobody. But nonetheless, that's, you know, that's what we feel like. <sighs> We are all reliant upon, I guess, both how we imagine people to see us and how people actually feel, if at all. And even if it's not much, even if it's just 1% that people have occasion to be roused by you one way or the other, what is one to think that entails? And what does it, what does it say? Especially when it comes out of the void. And sometimes my body just takes a break. I mean, I've actually pooped quite successfully the last... I had a couple fairly big ones yesterday. So, you know, I think sometimes my body just takes a break. You know, I've learned not to be too concerned about it. That's not like, you know... That, you know, a certain amount of emotion maybe builds up. And maybe that's good. I go into a bit of distress. We'll see you in the next hour, I'll tell you that. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> That's some exciting stuff there. I just got 500 calories signed on the phone by one. There's where that is. Okay. Let's go. I want to find my lid. I want to find my lid. If I can find my lid. Is it 37 or 27? I'm going to go with 37. If I can find... So that's my earth seat. You've seen me use different seats. So with the blanket, that works. Isn't that cool? It's kind of... That log was already kind of there. And it, look at that beautiful rune for strength right there. Look at... It's like the rune for strength. And it's like it's got a bow and arrow. And then these two runes for Awas. 13, 13. And it was just sort of sitting there, and then I looked at that, I was like, I need so, I sat here, I was like, I need like a throne or something. I love coming here, I need a seat. I'm looking for some place to sit down, you know? And I don't wait for the city to make a bench, I just like, oh, huh. oh, look at this. I tested it, it's like, oh, I can sit right here, right? I just need my, my blankie poo. Let's go. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to incorporate the word poo into my language to encourage my body to take one, you know? Like... Oh, this is such a, a goody poo day. <laughs> poo poo on that. <laughs> poo bear. <laughs> oh, I know. People don't want to listen to that. Oh, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> Dude, you talk about humiliation. Oh, God, you know, I don't mind making jokes about my poo. There are worse things in life. Trust me. There are many worse ordeals. There are people who'd be happy to listen to my poo compared to what they're going through right now. <laughs> you know, think about that. There are people that would be much happier being where you are or having the peace that you have every day than wherever they currently are. So, I mean, be a good representative of happiness. You're a politician of joys, which um, other people may not know or have never known. The peace of a good night's rest, for instance. <sighs> right? People that love you, enjoy that. Oh God, what is that? Wow, boop. Oh, I know, it's like a little pearl of wisdom. Nature is delivering pearls of wisdom to me. Hmm. Look at, that's a pearl of wisdom that nature gave me on my can. First the leaf and then the pearl of wisdom. If I was Alwyn Oak, I would think that this is leading us somewhere to a place of incredible fairy happiness. Let's go there. <laughs> oh, and what should we find? That is the nicest feather of a leaf I've seen in a long time. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> I wish I could download a little bit of Alwyn Oak. You know, I like a little dash of that to my life. It tells me that I'm in a better mood than not, you know? And this is, that's how my life should be. My channel should be like Alwyn Oak 2.0. <laughs> 
Hello, everyone. Magic is a foot. <laughs> Not a literal foot, of course, but if you thought that, you're too stupid to listen to this. <laughs> it means like it's about, like it's about to happen. If you listen and you're not stupid and try to have thoughts of your own. No, no, try again. <laughs> it's like, uh, how about this? Look at it, woman. We're in nature and it's fantastic. I'm in what I call the squishy place. <laughs> it's nothing to do with where I'm in. Literally, it's just that I feel sometimes that the world is just squishing me in. Like I'm inside Jesus's butt cheeks. And he's sitting down for a long lecture from his father. <laughs> okay, try again. Squishy cheeks. Squishy cheeks. It's gone in the squishy cheek place. I'm just stoned. Look at this. Pearls. Pearls. Why would nature think that I have pearls of wisdom? Because they're all over the place. Aren't they nice? <gasps> you're like mother of pearl. Mm. You're so sweet. Look at what nature offers us. <sighs> you can't eat them, but... They are so beautiful. And the golden banks on the other side of the river. It just sounds good. You'd be, like you could you could write a James Michener novel story like that. Call it the river. If their golden banks had heaved with nary a sigh, but a song for the more the years turns of the sun and song of the universe than any could possibly put into a single number, for it is constantly changing and editing itself. It is something that is beyond all understanding. <laughs> like one or three or six or six trillion or quadrillion or ten to the one billion quad Googles. It, it's, it loses all meaning after a while. And that's how you know it's meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you change the title of that book to Quandaries in the excessive alteration in the proportions of the universe to accommodate the degree and popularity of bullshit that billions of people worship every day <laughs> like 90210 you know it's weird like watching shows that got so much attention and how they accommodate that attention in the way that they get that attention they make a place for it they give it somewhere to go that always involves perversions. So it's like, oh, notice this, right? Anything that's popular with people does, I think, involve a certain kind of perversion to it, right? It's like, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, compared to which, talking about my poop is nothing. Just to bring it back around. Uh, circle in the sky. Where have you gone? Where have you gone? <laughs> <laughs> Apple of my eye, where have you gone? If only a check mark and a sticker and a smile from this rain could still do it for me. That woman was having a relationship with me, you know, if you ask me. My grateful teacher, we, had, we were having a relationship. It was the nicest relationship you ever had. And then when I saw this Sunday school teacher years later in the choir in this church, I remember feeling nauseous in the pit of my stomach. Isn't that weird? And just this nausea coming out of me. Kind of like from Miss Rain. You know, it's like there's something gross about how white people think of children. You know, and, uh, and uh, I think in that way that... Um, that uh, Wal Waldorf guy, what's his name, Rudolf Stein, he would say that like a lot of white people aren't energetically clean enough to be around their own children. Do you know that? Like he would, he would say shit like that. Like, like your minds are not well. Your children should have a chance to be with people like me. Not me, but like Rudolf Steiner and Waldorf teachers. I don't think a lot of Waldorf people really know. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Like they, they actually will come out and I think and tell that like, your, your, your children need time away from you. You know, it's like, and then they teach him about Adam and Eve. It's like, it's ridiculous, you know, but. You know, I say, you know what I say about the world? Keep it the way it is. You know, don't change a thing, white people. Really, don't. Don't listen to my videos. It's like, that's like someone saying, hey, son, continue to move around the earth. <laughs> hey, wind, keep blowing through the trees. <laughs> And also, everyone, you know, keep ignoring rain given. And you're like, okay. <laughs> it's like what most people are doing all the time. It's like, 
<laughs> I was like, so, like, why would you even say that? Because then I can say something that is true. <laughs> ah, yes, right. Stars keep twinkling. I get it. <laughs> Politicians keep lying. <laughs> <laughs> Men and women keep coming together, flirting with disaster <laughs> and each other's genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> I see how this goes. I like this game. It's wicked. <laughs> wicked game. I should make a, a thing called wicked games or just wicked. And like wicked things to spend your time doing on a rainy day <laughs> involving the English language. <laughs> and there's like hand puppets with representative Jane Danatalia and biblical characters. <laughs> just act out how it feels. <laughs> The penis is like, I hate you, I hate you. Nothing but scorn comes out of those lips. And I must labor in darkness that no darkness can comprehend because of thee, thee. I can't hit you, I can't live with you. What am I gonna do with you? <laughs> Your family is watching representative penis talking to a representative vagina, one on each hand. <laughs> I don't can't tell if our son's a genius or if he's deeply disturbed. <laughs> it's like, it's like, just leave me alone just leave me alone why did you even give birth to me my every word befouls whatever shift the stars had made to make their way across the waters deep I must now hover like the Lord and find what divisions of life that is left to me that once divided I shall come no more but as a thing of war do <laughs> Okay, son, that's enough. You're scary. <laughs> really, you're scary. It's like, it's Hallow's Eve, and that's enough. Let's just make jack-o'-lanterns and gingerbread cookies. <laughs> I mean, you're six, for Christ's sake. This is really too much. Well, you made me, Mom. You've allowed me all that time by myself every day to enjoy my full mental development. Do you smell that? Oh, my God. That's the most beautiful smell. I've gone out into nature, Mom, and smelled things that made my brain just stop and silently weep to itself. Oh, the love of my life. Oh, that's great. An entire planet speaking to me through my nostrils. What woman can possibly compete with that? <laughs> oh, my nostrils. Minstrels of nurses. Nostrils. The strills of nostrils. <laughs> the trilling of the sun. Well, if you think of nostril, it's got the sun backwards. Nos, no sun. How could you know anything without the sun? What kind of light of knowledge is it? If it's our nose, we have to spite our nose to make our face. <laughs> make any sense? No sun here, nope. No sun here at all. Just us nostrils hanging out together, taking a whiff of freedom before we go back to the grind. <laughs> Pumping my nads. That's what it's all about. Pumping my nads for freedom. <laughs> as you were, Professor. Please continue. <laughs> yes, well, as I was saying, X plus four equals. Oh, hello again. Hi. That is a nice dog you had, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. new puppy. Oh. Well, bless you. It looks like a good combination. Yeah. yeah. One, take care, right? Yeah. Nice right, puppy. Hey, right. This like he's really bonding well with that. Dog. I don't know. I thought that yesterday. It's like it's a nice combination. What a nice man. Very sensitive artist type. Yeah. It's like he's one of the nicest people I meet. We don't really share too many words. He's like me, only better and younger, and has someone to have sex with. <laughs> Beautiful wife. <laughs> I'm just like, sorry. No, I'm just saying. Like, got a nice family. Yeah, I'm not worthy. <laughs> I guess I, I don't need to know people. I just like to know they're happy. Yeah. Man, it's got a lot of good things going on there. Humble person, yeah. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, no sun. 
nostrils, the trills of the nos, the trills of the sun. Trills, trill, trilling, trilling, thrilling, drilling. <laughs> drill him through the, what if you had to go to the nose doctor, like you go to the dentist and they had to drill your nostrils? <laughs> it's like, if you don't get linocaine, your insurance will cover the whole thing. <laughs> Let her rip, dog. <laughs> oh my god. I can't smell anything for days. And I don't want to. It hurts when I smell. You had to clean out all that shit you've been smelling, Mr. Griffin. You obviously spend way too much time outside. We had to get you ready for the good stuff. The can there they put in the casinos and the malls to make you lose track of time, your mind, and all life in the universe. So that you can suddenly think that a furry dildo is a good present for your grandma. That's not a furry dildo. That's my son, Paul. He just got that way, eating too many orange juices. It's like some kind of mixing with his growth hormones. <laughs> oh, look at this. I came in here once, I'd lost my hat. And I guess someone put my hat on the sign and I came in here and this Robin just went, Doo. I said, you know, I kind of listened to him, like, Doo -doo -doo. landed on the sign. I was like, like saying, there's your hat. And I was like, oh, thank you. And then I lost it to the ocean a few days later. But now I have this hat and I never gave it to me. If I hadn't lost that one, I never would have started wearing this one. And I really like it. And I thought, well, I hope someone got my hat at least because the ocean tends to wash things up. And I never did find it. So hopefully someone out there, there's someone sporting my hat. <laughs> And I'll meet them one day and be like, hey, right on. Shh, I won't say anything. It's okay. <laughs> I know your secret. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just because somebody, and they're like, don't you think maybe they manufactured more than one hat that looks like this? Shh, yeah, right. <laughs> but that one's mine. <laughs> How do you know? Because, I don't know, it just makes sense somehow. It was like the moment. <laughs> You know, that's kind of like how some Christian women come up to me. Like, part of talking to strangers is observing things, right? But they have obviously been trained to observe a lot, except that my great abhorrence are being approached because A, I looked like I needed some help, and B, they also journal and read books and get coffee and look like they want to be by themselves, even though they're in public. And did you know that Jesus is inside of you? And I was looking at you, as well I knew they were, got up, went down the stairs, came up and thought, I think I've got to shove Jesus and my opinions and observations and the fact that they look in distress right back in their face <laughs> is a testament to my love for total strangers and nothing to do with the forlorn nature of my hairy pussy and the fact that you have a dick and you're clearly alone and let my observations stand as my deep interest in, like Jesus, things that are inside of you that are also inside of me and how we can get together one day and talk about all these things that are deeply inside of us. Like my concern for you is inside of me in ways that other parts of you could one day be inside of me. But never as much as I have now come inside of you. In so many ways, you're welcome. Maybe that's why I said thank you. It was like that whole conversation actually happened. And that's how you get them to go away. You're like, thank you for sexually assaulting me. <laughs> thank you. You say thank you to crazy people on the bus who you know, decide to favor you with unknown amounts of hostility from the deep, dark sarcophagus where they keep all kinds of shit that happens to them that only comes out when they find someone vulnerable on the bus standing beside them. But thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, of course, thank you. <laughs> what else could one do with such generosity <laughs> and humiliation meted out with such dexterity? <laughs> such complete and reckless abandon as it comes to all propriety, throwing all propriety to naught, as Emma Thompson might say, quite. <laughs> you set the world astir, the whole new disequilibrium that shall last for eons. 
just when it found its perfect peace <laughs> in the great anthropocosmic parade of souls that move from place to place, never finding that harbor from whence we need on more than more, but by meeting out all kinds of deadly forms of humiliation, themselves thrown off by the morbid and deprecating remarks which punctuated their fateful words with your own mind. <laughs> and indeed, I have no abhorrence for the like. The whore of Babylon has my name tattooed inside her useless vulva, <laughs> and I am thankful. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I just became the weirdest person on the bus. That's how you fight them off, with craziness <laughs> that makes more sense than they could ever fathom, like so much of their violence, even as they breathe. <laughs> oh, I will not task one person for the discomfort which you have brought upon me when I consider all the other persons who have done so. <laughs> I will not single you out for my anger. I will thank you in kind. One day I'll just take you all out at once. <laughs> <laughs> With bombs of kindness. <laughs> like you gave me bombs of your kindness. And I wanted to blow my brains out. <laughs> but only better. You will get to keep your brains in. <laughs> Which is strange because you're actually the more useful brains for changing out for better brains. <laughs> I would only blow them out if suddenly like a vacuum, nature had to fill <laughs> instantly, and all would be well. You know, a perfect painless lobotomy that brought things back to sane. That's the only violence I'm into. <laughs> the impossible dream. <laughs> Doing harm to none, of course, and greatness for all. Long live the queen. And if she's dead, long live the king in her place. Mm. and so on, in even succession, as they move to and fro about the very purest chambers of my mind, which I reserve only for the censors of the most homely woodland people and their kind. I'm going to a place that I will find, and I'll let you know how I'm doing when I get there. Thank you.